Good morning, Surprise Christian Church. Happy Sunday. Glad you guys are with us this morning. Let us uh, gather in our homes and take this time to worship our Lord and Savior this morning. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. of the darkness you're the light that guides me through our eyes are on you you are near to the broken the weak find their strength in you our eyes are on you let's see when I'm lost in the madness When I'm lost in the madness, you're the peace that comes my soul. All eyes are on you. And you bring hope to the hopeless. You're the love that won't let go. All eyes are on you. We lift our eyes, cause we lift our eyes to you. Where our help comes from and our hope is found in you. Jesus, Lord of all, we lift our eyes to you, exalted one, exalted one, in the midst, in the midst of the darkness, your light that guides me through, our eyes are on you. To the broken, the weak find their strength in you. Our eyes are on you. We lift our eyes, cause we lift our eyes to you. Where our help comes from and our hope is found in you. Jesus, Lord of all, we lift our eyes to you. Exalted, oh, Lord, exalted, oh. Stands. Your promise stands, your love endures, nothing can shake us standing on your word. We're not afraid, we're full of hope, you'll never leave and you'll never let us go. Cause we lift our eyes to you, where our help comes from, and our hope is found in you. Jesus, Lord of all, we lift our eyes to you, exalted one. We lift our eyes, because we lift our eyes to you. Where our help comes from, our hope is found in you. Jesus, Lord of all, we lift our eyes to you, exalted one. Jesus 
has overcome Mercy triumph When the third day dawn Darkness was denied When the stone was gone Oh, unstoppable God Let your glory go on and on Impossible things in your name shall be nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable nothing shall be impossible your kingdom reigns unstoppable we'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. And we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. And we'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. God, unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name that shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name that shall be Turn into eyes, open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, there's none like you. Into the darkness, you shine, and out of the ashes, we rise. There's no one like you, there's none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, yeah. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise, there's no one like you, there's none like you, cause our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, oh our God, and our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is freedom, awesome in power. Our God, oh, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what could stand against us? 
And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Oh, oh, yeah. Cause our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other, and our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, oh, our God, yeah. Good morning, Surprise Christian Church. I am so glad that you guys have joined us again this morning. Uh, as you can see, Pastor Brian is still not here. Uh, his family, uh, Grace, initially tested positive for COVID, and she's doing much better now. Uh, but the rest of the Star family also got COVID, and so uh, they've they've kind of been in quarantine the last two weeks or so. And so just be, continue to pray for them. Um, I know that they're doing well, and so they're getting better, but just, just be praying for them as they go through the trials of, of getting COVID. But I get to do the communion thought today, and uh, I'm always excited to get to do it when I get the opportunity because to me, when we talk about communion, we're talking about the most important thing that we get to do when we gather on a Sunday. And I know right now we're, we're not gathering, right? <clears throat> we're not gathering in person because our building isn't finished quite yet, but, but we're gathering here digitally. And, and even though it's not communion in the way that we want to do it, in the way that we need to do it, we still get to celebrate the most important aspect of our faith, and that is the gospel truth that Jesus came, died, was buried, rose again on the third day, and ascended to the Father in heaven to, to pay for our sins. And, and so I, I was reminded of this when I was reading John this week. In John chapter 1, we get this story of John the Baptist who was going and, and proclaiming that this man was coming who was going to take away the sins of the world. And I love this short and simple verse. After John was being questioned about who he was, the next day it says this in John chapter 1, verse 29. It says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I told you about. After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I didn't know him, but I came baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. And it goes on a little bit later. Verse 35, it says, The next day John was standing with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. Folks, when we celebrate communion, the main thing that we're doing, as, whether it's Brian or me or, or Brian Brown or Matthew or whoever, Brandy, whoever's up here doing it, what we want to do is we want to say, look, it's the Lamb of God. It's the one who takes away the sin of the world. It is the Savior. It is the King. It is the Lord of Lords. And, and our desire, our, our, our passion is that you would see Christ and you would say, I'm going to follow him because he died for me. And so as we take communion today, just the bread representing the body that was broken, the juice representing his blood that was shed for us, I just want you to focus in. I am following Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Pray with me. God, as we go through this season, I ask that you be with us. And God, this morning as we approach your word, as we approach you and the throne of grace, I just ask that you draw us in. You cry out to our hearts. And we look to you as the Savior, the Lamb, the God that takes away the sins of the whole world. Let this time glorify you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Savior say, 
Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me that all in all, cause Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. And sin had left a crimson stain, and he washed it white as snow. Indeed, I find thy power in thine alone. Can chase the leopard spots and melt thy heart of smoke. As Jesus paid it all, and all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, and he walked still white as snow. In we before the throne, I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to say my lips shall still repeat as Jesus paid it all all to him my own sin had left a crimson stain and he walked still white as snow had left a crimson stain he walked still white as snow oh praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead oh praise the in my death and I raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and I raised his life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and I raised his life up from the dead. time of remembering what you've done for us, Lord, so that we could live and know what true love is, what, what salvation is, what mercy, grace, all those things are, Lord, we thank you, God, for allowing us to experience that and to be held true to you, Lord, to be called children of God, Lord, to be saved by your name, Lord, we thank you for all these things in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Well, good morning again, Surprise Christian Church. I'm so glad that you guys have joined us this morning. Uh, and as, as I said before, it is, is just Brad and I here today. Well, and Kenyon. I, I can't forget Kenyon back there. Man, how could I ever forget Kenyon? <laughs> but I am glad that you guys are with us this morning, and I'm excited to get started. Some quick announcements uh, just right off the bat. So something that's coming up, 
just want to make sure you have on your calendar, September 25th, it's a Saturday from 9 to 1, we're going to be at Valley View Community Food Bank, uh, and we're going to be, oh, I apologize, it's the 18th, Brad just corrected me off stage, <laughs> September 18th, it's a Saturday from 9 to 1, write that down, September 18th, we're going to be at Valley View Commun- Community <laughs> Food Bank, see, when Brian's not here, I'm just a mess, I'm not together at all, that's, that's really what it is, but we're going to be at Valley View Community Food Bank, and we're going to be serving our community I encourage you guys to join us there. We, we really are making it a priority that we have something every month while we're still in this building process where we can come together and gather and serve the community and pray together and meet together. So just put that on your calendar and make it something that, that you really make an effort to make it out to. I love getting to serve at Valley View. They are, they are an amazing food bank that is very needed in the community. So please come and do that. Uh, remember, kids' resources are online as well at surprise.church. Um, you can also get the youth resources. Talk to Brian Brown. You can email him at brian.brown at surprise.church. If you'd like to see where youth is gathering, um, he always sends out a parent email and lets people know, here's what we're doing, here's the events that are going on. So if you have students, uh, reach out to Brian. And as always, be filling out your uh, prayer requests. If you go online, you'll, you'll see that actually. If you're on the stream right now on the website or on the app, you should see on your right-hand side a space that says prayer requests. Go ahead and put your prayer requests in there. Um, something that we've been doing regularly is, is getting together and praying over those prayer requests. And, and one thing we love to do now is, is every week we have this thing called Prayer Central. And it'll go through and it'll give us the prayers from the last uh, 90 days or so. And we'll be able to go through and pray through those things as elders, as staff. And so we love to get to pray for you guys. And one of the things I miss the most about the gathering is being able to hear what's going on in your life and being able to pray for you. So I would really appreciate if you'd spend some time putting in prayer requests in there so that we can be praying for the things going on in your life. Um, As I had said last weekend, and I put out in my email as well, we are still... Uh, working on the building, of course. I'm actually looking at a fully painted room right now here in the worship room, which looks fantastic. It is starting to look like a room. We have doors up on the little entryway here. Um, so, so things are starting to come together in this room. Uh, next door, we're working on the plumbing. We hired a plumber to knock out the plumbing. We've had so many delays with the plumbing over the months. Um, and so we, we hired somebody and he's working hard to get that done. And it's, it looks like it's almost there as well. And so we're making progress. Once we get that floor closed, really things will start flying. We bought carpet this week uh, so we can start laying carpet. We have the tile out there to be ready to lay tile. Um, so we are, we are getting a little bit closer uh, to be able to gather again. And, and so I'm looking forward to that. But that's just a little update. We appreciate you guys and how faithful you've been in giving We ask that you continue to do so. And and more than that, as I've said before, this season is a tough one. This is a make it, break it season for us. Um, It's been a long time since we've had a full church gathering in person. And you guys have been awesome through that whole time, just sticking with us. Uh, And we are almost there, but we really need to push that last little bit over the top to get this thing finished. And and it's so close, it's almost frustrating how close it is because I just want it to be done so we can gather. But just be praying and thinking about that, and I appreciate you guys in the way that you give and support the church. With that being said, let's get into it this morning. Psalm 18 is where we're going. I love to pray the Psalms over our service as we get started with the sermon. We're just doing a little section of Psalm 18. I encourage you to go back later and read the rest of the psalm after the service is over, but I want to read this small portion today. Psalm 18, starting in verse 1, it says this, I love you, Lord, my strength. I just want to stop for a second. Um, I don't know about you, but, you know, in my prayer life, something that I think lacks sometimes is simply expressing to God how grateful I am for who he is, what he's done, and to express that love that I have for Christ. Right? I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock, where I seek refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. 
I called to the Lord who is worthy of praise, and I was saved from my enemies. The ropes of death were wrapped around me. The torrents of destruction terrified me. The ropes of Sheol, simply the grave, entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. I called to the Lord in my distress, and I cried to my God for help. From his temple he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. Then the earth shook and quaked. The foundations of the mountains trembled. They shook because he burned with anger. Smoke rose from his nostrils, and consuming fire came from his mouth. Coals were set ablaze by it. He bent the heavens and came down. Total darkness beneath his feet. I want you to picture the cross, right? When Jesus is on the cross, the earth shakes, the sky darkens. That's the picture in the psalm. He rode on a cherub and flew, soaring on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place, dark storm clouds, his canopy around him. From the radiance of his presence, his clouds swept onward with hail and blazing coals. The Lord thundered from heaven. The Most High made his voice heard. He shot his arrows and scattered them. He hurled lightning bolts and routed them. The depths of the sea became visible. The foundations of the world were exposed. At your rebuke, Lord, at the blast of the breath of your nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He pulled me out of deep water. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out to a spacious place, and he rescued me because he delighted in me. Pray with me. Lord, as we get started this morning, just teaching your word and going through and seeking you, Lord, Remind us, God, that our sins, our enemies, they're beyond our ability, God, to fight them alone. God, the things of this world, the pains of this world, the sudden destruction that can happen in this world, God, they are beyond our ability to overcome them on our own. Lord, without you as the rock, without you as our shield, without you as our savior coming to rescue us. God, we are hopeless. Remind us this morning that it is you and you alone who we can trust. It is you and you alone who we can rely on. It is you and you alone who gives us a ground, a steady footing. God, you are awesome. And we thank you that you love us and that you are with us, protecting us, guiding us, leading us. And I pray that this day you open our hearts just a little bit more to trust you. Lord, you are awesome. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we've been in this series titled Trust. We've been going through and looking at what it means to walk in faith and trusting Jesus. And we've been going through the Sermon on the Mount as Jesus has been leading us through his teaching to all his disciples and all those gathered at this mount. And he's teaching this whole thing. And we've, we've gone through, through a couple chapters that have taken us several months to get through. But this is the last weekend of the Sermon on the Mount. Next week, we move on. And we're moving on into a new series titled Chain Breaker. And I am so excited to go through that series with you guys because Jesus is a chain breaker breaker. And I I just, I love getting to preach and teach that. So that's starting next weekend, but this weekend we are closing our series, Trust. And I want you to hear this. This is probably the most important piece of my sermon today. It'll begin and it'll close the sermon today, but it is this, trusting Jesus gives a rock solid foundation in an ever shifting world. Trusting Jesus gives a rock-solid foundation in an ever-shifting world. So much of our lives change so quickly. You know, I think of this season as just perfect to exemplify that. 
think of your life if you even can, right? This is, I, I made a joke the other week when I was talking to one of our elders, Kevin. It, it's like it's the Neolithic era, the pre-COVID era, right? <laughs> you talk about it as if it was dinosaur times, right? It was so long ago. It was so far in the past. We got to bust out history books just to even think about what that looked like. But I want you to imagine what your life looked like pre COVID and how much has changed, how much of our world has been shifted. I think of the church alone, right? I think of that weekend. It was a Saturday right before Easter when we got a call from the school and they were like, hey, you guys, you just can't come back because of COVID. The next morning was Easter Sunday, right? And since that moment, we have not had the full congregation other than our prayer meeting together to worship and and, and to get together for service. Our world shifted in a day and has affected us now for well over a year. How often in life do you feel like things are going well or you have solid footing and then all of a sudden the world shifts and changes and takes away what you thought you had. You see, this world is full of those type of events, those types of situations. We've seen something similar happen recently in Afghanistan, right? We, we see these type of things happen where all of a sudden something that was semi-stable, semi-together, now is just a collapse and a calamity and human life is being lost and it's a tragedy. It happens all the time in our world where things look stable and then they shift into chaos. Jesus is the solution. And I'm going to explain why. It's not that you will stop experiencing these things in life. That's unavoidable. But it is that you will have a foundation that when everything else is shaking, you will know you have Christ to hold on to and you will know that you are secure for eternity with him. And so the things temporarily here will be less fearful. So I want you to engage with me in this. I want you to to stick with me. There's some difficult teachings in here. There are some really powerful teachings in here. But I want you to just stick with me on it. So here we go. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 is where we are going. As I said, this is the very last sermon in the Sermon on the Mount series. And, And so we're right at the end. Verse 21. And remember last weekend, really quickly, I just want to preempt this. I said that these are all together, right? The two teachings we did last weekend and the two teachings we are doing this weekend, they all go together. The first two were a set of commands. This two is descriptions. And so we're going to walk through that together. So here we go. Jesus says this in verse 21. Now everyone who says to me, or sorry, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell The rivers rose and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house, and it collapsed. It collapsed with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not like their scribes. So let's go through this verse by verse. Let's start back in verse 21. Jesus says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. So not everyone who claims Jesus as Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, I know that this passage can be pretty terrifying. And and in fact, when I talk to people in the congregation who are struggling with their faith, this is almost always the passage that they bring to me. And they say, I don't want to be the one that says, Lord Jesus, 
and then does not enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is a good thing to have on your heart, right? I want to know what the Lord is telling me. I want to understand so that I don't miss out. Just because I'm calling on him, I don't want to miss out on the kingdom of heaven. But I want to stop for a minute and I want to say, isn't this teaching from Jesus that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, isn't that obvious? Isn't that obvious? I want to offer a little bit of a change here. You see, in the Greek, this is an active participle, and you don't have to know what that means, but just a simple way to translate this. I I think it's a little better to say, not everyone who is saying to me, Lord, Lord. So our translation says, not everyone who says. I'm saying it's not everyone who is saying to me, Lord, Lord. And why do I make that so important? Because it's, it's happening right now. Jesus is looking out at this crowd. Remember, he's on the mountaintop. He's with his disciples. He's with potential followers. And he's looking out at the crowd and he's giving this teaching. This isn't just in a book, right? This was something that was happening in real life. And Jesus is looking out and he's saying, not everyone who's saying to me here right now, Lord, Lord, is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? Because people sometimes Go after teachers, leaders, movements, because it's what everyone else is doing. I think of the silly challenges that always come up, right? Remember years ago, there was the Tide Pod Challenge, right? And all of us got a good laugh out of that because it was so silly. But uh, it's just young people eating Tide Pods, right? The detergent, the laundry detergent. They were just, they were going and eating them and bursting them and because they, they were in these little fun packs or whatever. But that if you eat laundry detergent, it could be deadly, right? So this was a pretty silly thing, but people were doing it. So I got to jump in, right? I got to go eat a Tide Pod so everyone thinks I'm on the in with everybody else. We've seen other things over the years, like the planking challenge or the cinnamon challenge or any of those things. You can go look them up. But the point is, people do silly things, stupid things, dangerous things even, because they see other people doing them. And they think that they'll have some kind of benefit by going after these movements or these these people or these individuals, right? It's mob and group mentality. It has real power. Jesus is looking out at the crowd and he's he's acknowledging not everybody who's who's seeing me do miracles and and seeing me do all these amazing works and hearing my teachings and, and are amazed, not all those people are entering the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because they are missing the point. They're here for another reason. They're here to serve themselves, meet their own needs, follow the group, whatever it is, but they're not here for me. Jesus is looking out and acknowledging the obvious. People sometimes follow for the wrong reasons, with the wrong mindset, and they miss the truth of the gospel. So not everyone who cries on Jesus' name will be in the kingdom of heaven. But Jesus specifies, so who is? Only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Now, we found the most important piece here, right? How do you know you're going to enter the kingdom? Well, are you doing the will of the Father in heaven? Well, what is the will of the Father in heaven? And it might not be so obvious. For you, you might be thinking, well, you know, I read in my Bible do not murder. So I just need to not murder. That's the will of God. And if I don't murder, I'm going to enter the kingdom of God. But we know, right? We know from scripture that we all disobey. All of us are sinners. All of us break God's law. All of us flee from the will of the Father. So who is it that is going to do the will of the Father and enter the kingdom? Well, I want to read a couple verses for you that I think will maybe transform the way you're thinking. Instead of, here's this rule list, and I got to make sure I do all the rules on the rule list, and that's how I enter the kingdom of God. Instead, I want you to see this as the will of the Father in heaven is that you trust in Jesus. That's the will of the Father in heaven. So let me show you. John chapter 6, verse 40. Jesus says this specifically to the crowd. For this is the will 
of my Father in heaven. It's kind of important, right? Jesus is telling us what it is directly and specifically. That everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. And I will raise him up on the last day. This is Jesus' will. This is the Father's will. That you look to Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior, and you say, I trust Jesus to save me. Let me add a little bit more. In John 15, Jesus teaches this to his disciples, starting in verse 9. He says, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be made full. Okay, so keep my commandments and you'll remain in me. What is the commandment? Verse 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. And we're just going to stop there. So what's the second piece of it, right? Jesus says the will of the Father is that we look and we trust upon the Son, Well, what else is God's will? Well, what else is God's will is to love one another. To love one another. John puts it like this in 1 John chapter 3, 19 through 24. I just want to read it because I think this is the most important piece of this passage. So here it says, This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and will reassure our hearts before him, whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts and he knows all things. So friends, hear what John's saying. Those of you who have read this passage before and have gone, I'm afraid that I'm not the one who's gonna enter the kingdom. I'm afraid I'm the one in this story that Jesus is gonna say, depart from me. I never knew you. If that's you, hear this passage. That's what John's talking about. When you're afraid, when your heart condemns you, how do you know you belong to the truth? Here's what he says, verse 21. Dear friends, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commands and do what is pleasing in his sight, right? Now what's the command? Now this is his command, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps his commands remain in him and he in him. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he has given us. So what does John do? He, he just basically combines these two teachings from Jesus. And he says, this is what it's all about. You want to know what this whole thing is about? You want to know what it means to enter the kingdom of God? You want to know what it means to receive salvation? The whole deal. Here's what it's about. Trust Jesus and love one another. Trust Jesus and love one another. That's what it means to enter the kingdom of God. And if you are looking on Jesus, have no fear that when the day comes, he'll say, I never knew you. Because if you're trusting in him to save you, he will save you. I want you to notice, let's keep going. Back to our passage in Matthew 7, verse 22. I want you to notice how Jesus describes these people who are not gonna enter the kingdom. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name, drive out demons in your name, and do many miracles in your name? Then I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. I want you to look. You see, I I, I told you what it is to enter the kingdom, right? Trust Jesus. Love one another. So what is it not? Well, look what these people do. What do they say? We prophesied in your name. We drove out demons in your name. We did many miracles in your name. I want you to notice what the people do not say. What do they not say? They don't say, Lord, Lord, didn't I put my faith and trust in you? Didn't I rely on you to cleanse me of my sins? Didn't I rely on you as my savior? Didn't I look to you and the finished work on the cross and cry out to you for mercy? 
What do they not say? They don't say, Lord, Lord, didn't I let the love you have for me pour out to others? Didn't I let the love you have for me fill my heart and overflow to the world? Didn't I let the love you have for me uh, return it with whole heart, mind, and soul, leading me to sacrifice myself for others like you've done for me? They didn't say any of those things. They didn't say they trusted him. They didn't say they loved others. What did they say? Look at all the stuff we did, Jesus. Look at all the good things we did in your name. Shouldn't we have earned our place in the kingdom by these good things that we did in your name? We prophesied, cast out demons. We did miracles. And Jesus saying, I never even knew you. You're throwing my name around. You're following the crowd, so to speak. You're going to church for your own reasons, your own purposes to serve your own ego. You're going around doing these things because you think they save you. And I never knew you. I never knew you. In Greek, this was word. This word for never, udapata, and it simply means like the strongest possible never you could ever say. When we were kids, we'd say never, ever, 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 right? Or never times infinity, or never have I ever, whatever you want to say, never have I knew you. This is the strongest way Jesus could have possibly said the word never. What he's saying is, I didn't know you for a little while and then you ran away. I didn't know you for a long time and then you decided to go somewhere else. I never knew you. You never trusted me. You never went after me. You never sought me. You just sought the things you could do in my name. And Jesus says in the end, depart from me, you lawbreakers, right? They never knew Jesus. They never had trust in Jesus. So they didn't have anyone to pay for their sins. They're lawbreakers. You see, my friends, this is not Christians who trust and have faith in Christ and look to him every day and pour out their love for him and their love for others that Jesus is saying, get away from me. You were just too bad for me to save. This is people who look to themselves, to their own works, to their own good, the things that they do, the things that they accomplish. And they say, Jesus, you gotta let me in. I did a lot. You gotta let me in. That ain't gonna cut it because it's not the gospel. The gospel is we're all sinners in need of grace and when we look to Christ and Christ alone, we will be saved. So Jesus continues. In Matthew 7, verse 24, therefore, he says, remember, I've taught you guys many times, right? Therefore means go back and read what came before. We just did that, right? So building on that, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain fell, the rivers rose, and the winds blew and pounded that house, yet it didn't collapse because its foundation was on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and doesn't act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell, the rivers rose, the winds blew and pounded that house, and it collapsed, and it collapsed with a great crash. I want you to notice There's one man who builds his house on the sand. There's one man who builds his house on the rock. But both people experience the rain, the rivers, and the wind. Now, I know this is a little bit removed from us. When I lived in Dallas, I got to experience this firsthand when I saw tornadoes come to rip through whole towns. And and there's this place called uh, Palo Pinto in Texas. And And for whatever reason, every time we turn on the news when a tornado came through, I mean, they got just destroyed by every tornado. And there was, I mean, hundreds of tornadoes a year. And every single one seemed to hit their little town. And I felt so bad for them. But, you know, here in Arizona, we barely even get rain at all. There's not really any rivers, you know. We have have little areas that were named rivers at one point, but now they're just dry dirt. So we don't really have this problem, right? But for a lot of places in the world... When the rain falls 
in huge amounts, what happens? There's floods. I remember it just recently rained up in Flagstaff and there are all these videos of, of like basically rivers forming in the street and taking people's cars and just, <laughs> just dragging them away into the flood. When rains come, floods come, rivers rise, calamity starts to come, wind blows and, and houses that aren't built on a solid foundation are washed away in the storm. But both, the person who built their house on the sand and the person who built their house on the rock, both of them experience the storm. There's no escaping it in life. We will all experience the storm and the calamity and the sudden destruction of life. Question is, are you on the rock? Are you on the rock? I want to go into our lessons for disciples. Actually, let's let's hit this last little verse and then we'll go into our lessons for disciples. In verse 28, it says this When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were astonished at his teaching because he was teaching them like one who had authority and not like their scribes. You see, when I come up and preach, The only authority that I have is in as far as I preach the scripture. As a pastor, I don't have some special authority to give you new teachings or tell you new ways to go about things. This is it. This is the authority because this is the word of God. Jesus is different. When Jesus comes and teaches, everything he says, authority. Everything he says, scripture level truth. Let's get into our lessons for disciples, but there's only one, and it's this. It's what we started with. Trusting Jesus gives a rock-solid foundation in an ever-shifting world. You see, I I was reading this this week, and I was reminded of one of my favorite movies, my wife and I both, and I actually think this is our plan for our costumes later in the year in the holidays uh, during Halloween is, is this movie called The Princess Bride, if you've ever seen The Princess Bride before. It's a great movie, and some people think it's a little cheesy, but I think it's a fantastic movie. And there's this scene where they're wandering through this swamp, and all of a sudden, they they sink into quicksand, and they fall into the quicksand, and they have to to dive in and get her out, and it's this whole scene that there's just this sudden uh, sinking sand that just draws them in. This is what life is like sometimes. I'm reminded of that apartment complex that just fell over, right? That sunk into the, to the earth, basically, and, and the foundation gave in, and the whole thing collapsed. You see, life, as I said at the beginning, suddenly shifts and changes and takes everything away that you thought you can lean on, that you thought you can trust in. But Jesus, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The truth of the gospel, who God is, and what he's done for us stays the same. You see, the invitation to trust Jesus the invitation to follow the narrow path, the invitation to go after the Lamb of God, that you must hear and go and follow and build your life on the rock. Because if you build it on anything else in this life, I promise you it could be gone in an instant. Maybe you put your trust in your bank account. Maybe you put your trust in the things that you own. Maybe you put your trust in your spouse or your family. Maybe you put your trust in your job. Maybe you put your trust in other people, your friends around you to save you when things get hard. Maybe you put your trust in yourself and your own ability to put it all together. But I promise you, if you're leaning on anything but the rock, You are on sand. And you will be shocked how quickly that can turn into quicksand that will sink you and destroy your life. 
But when we're built on the rock, the storm comes, but we are on solid ground. You see, Jesus is expressing to us in the first part of this passage, there will be many That's always the part that breaks me in this passage. Jesus says in verse 22, there will be many on that day who will say to me, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? I have demons in your name, do many miracles in your name. And I will announce to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you lawbreakers. There will be many. Not just a few, not just a handful, not just a couple. There will be many people who Jesus will look at and say, you never trusted me, you trusted yourself, you trusted the things around you, you followed me because you thought you got superpowers or you thought you got good things in life or you thought whatever you thought, you didn't trust me to save you, you trusted me to give you good stuff, I guess, but you never knew me and I never knew you. There will be many who look to themselves and enter outside of the kingdom of heaven. You know, as a pastor, there's nothing at all that I want more than for you to look to Jesus and say, I trust you as my Lord and as my Savior. And I know that if I trust you, you're going to save me. I want that more than anything else. Because I know that when that's true and you really cling on to Christ and you really grab him, he's not going to let you go and you are going to enter the kingdom of God. But my fear is that so many people are standing on sand and they don't even know it. Because you don't ever stop to think, am I trusting Jesus or am I trusting myself and what I can do? or others in what they can do. My friends, trust in Christ. He is the rock, and he will not let you down. Pray with me. Lord, as we face so many things in our lives, as the winds blow, and the rivers rise, and the rain falls, God, as we face tragedy after tragedy, after everything we thought we could rely on is shaken out from underneath us, whether that's our finances or our job or our family or whatever it is, Lord, when we feel helpless and lost in this world, when we feel we have nothing left to fall back on, help that be the moment where we cry out to the rock and we say, Lord, save us. And Lord, I pray also for those who think they're on solid ground, who think they have it all together, they've done enough good, they've put their lives together enough, they they obey enough, they go to church enough, they give enough, they pray enough, they worship enough, they do enough, they should get into the kingdom because they're good enough. God, I ask you to break their spirit. Humble them. And teach them that if they aren't on you, if they aren't with you, if they don't trust you, if they don't lean on you, they will never enter the kingdom of God. God, move on our hearts. Give us the humility to say, Lord, we're sinners that need you. And then give us the love and the passion to pour out the gospel truth and the love of Christ to everyone around us. God, you are awesome. And I pray this in the name of the King of the universe, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great week. I'm excited to start a new series next weekend, and I'll see you there.